Flash on rides, man. Just don't. Just don't do it. I don't understand what, what's so hard about turning Flash off. Hey guys, it's Christine, also known as Ivy Winter. Thank you for joining me for another Disney video. Today, I wanna to talk about what not to do at Disney World, and there's a lot of them. I got 15 of them. 15 things that you should not do at Disney World. And this is a mix of, hey, don't do it because it's kind of rude, but also a mix of like, don't do this because it might not be the most ideal way to plan your trip or to handle your trip. So it's a bit of a mix of both. And I think sometimes knowing what not to do, it's just as important as knowing what to do at a place. And especially with Disney World, there's just so much going on and it's hard to understand and take everything in sometimes. So I want to break this down. 15 things, I'm going to bust through these, um, that you should not do at Disney World. Number one. Don't cut the line. This should be kind of obvious, but I do know that in some countries it's totally okay. In fact, when I was doing my research about Hong Kong Disneyland, RIP didn't get to go. A lot of it was that in China, it's kind of normal to just kind of get in line and go ahead and meet up with groups. And you know, that's totally normal for them. It's not really considered rude and you just kind of expect it. But here in the US, Obviously it's really different and people will not be happy with you if you cut in line. Cutting in line is just a really big no-no at Disney World. We're all there and we're all waiting. And I know it sucks that sometimes the waits are long, but we're all in the same boat and cutting people, it's just really putting a damper on their vacation to benefit yours. So just don't do it, it's not cool. Number two, don't hold a place in line for more than like one to two people. And even that might be a point of contention because there's probably some people watching this who are like, what, don't? hold a place in line for anybody, that's terrible. I'm a little bit more lenient. I'm okay with somebody has to leave and go to the bathroom and come back because hello, IBS, and if that happened to me, I would hope that people would be nice enough to let me leave and come back, I'm just saying. Um, and also I understand if you have a kid and you need to go to the bathroom if there's an emergency and then you need to come back. I am totally okay with one or two people meeting up with a group ahead. I am not okay with people who hold a spot in line for like seven of their family members. Like that's just not cool. At that point, if you were that one person waiting for seven people, just wait outside the line and get in line together. Number three, do not jump on the very first bag check line or ticket line as you're entering the park because that's just gonna make that line longer. A lot of people will show up, say Magic Kingdom, and they just beeline straight ahead and they will hit that first uh, ticket line and not realize that there are so many other cast members taking and scanning, you know, Magic fans taking tickets and there's shorter lines all around you. But a lot of people for some reason just like to go to that first like one or two and then that line is like all the way up to here and then there's nobody going into the other ticket areas. So spread out, take the time to, you know, move down some and you'll get into the park so much faster. Number four, don't be rude to cast members. I know that it's really easy to take things out on somebody who's working at a place and this goes for anywhere, not just Disney World, because things sometimes go wrong. But you have to understand that these people are working for a living, they're doing the best that they can, and it's not up to them whether a ride breaks down or not, it's not up to them if the fireworks can go off or not during a storm. And you need to have a little bit of compassion and not blame them for things that are out of their hands. They really are just trying hard to make sure you have a great vacation. So um, do what you can to not be rude to cast members, even if you're upset about something. Number five, do not pack a full suitcase. Why? You need room for souvenirs. You're gonna want souvenirs, trust me. Especially if this is your first time going. So never pack a full suitcase. Make sure that you have some extra space to take things home because it's gonna be a pain in the butt if your airline only allows so many bags on carry-on and now you're carrying like a whole bunch of Disney bags to try and get through uh, security that way. Just make sure you have some room in your luggage. Number six, do not impersonate a Disney character. This is actually a really big rule at the parks. Disney bounding, totally okay. Costumes during the Halloween party, totally okay. But if you're going in any other time of year and you're like really dressed up as a character, you cannot pretend you are that character. You cannot give out autographs, take photos of anybody or anything like that because Disney has a certain style of show and they don't want somebody to just come in and pretend to be a, someone who's working there and isn't. It becomes this whole weird thing 
and could be a legal issue for them, so just don't do it. Number seven, don't use a selfie stick because they're gonna take it from you. This has been a new rule in the past couple of years. They do not allow selfie sticks. That said, you can bring smaller tripods, so things like little gorilla pods. The big reason is because it's a danger on rides, but like I said, they will take it from you. You can get it back when you leave the park. They will just hold it up at the front, but they're gonna take it from you, so just don't even bother. Number eight, do not wing it. I know that planning for Disney vacation can be really overwhelming, and I'm not saying that you need to plan out every single minute of your day. I promise that's not the case. But you should have somewhat of an idea of what parks you want to go to, where you might want to eat, if you want to have a break day. Just kind of have some semblance of a plan, because if you just try to wing it, if you don't even look anything up, if you say, I'm going to Disney World and I'm not going to look at a darn thing, you're gonna be so overwhelmed and probably not have that great of a time. Do a little planning. Even if it's the littlest planning ever, just do a little bit. Number nine, do not dress uncomfortably. See, a lot of people who go to the parks who are wearing, like women are wearing heels, and I see people just wearing the wrong clothes for the weather, whether it's too many layers, too few layers, because they think it's gonna be hot and it's not. Wear comfortable shoes, wear whatever the most comfortable clothing is. Maybe that is a dress for you, but maybe that's sweatpants. Whatever works for you, nobody's gonna judge you, but just be comfortable, because it's really long days, and you are going to just feel so miserable if you're not in your most comfortable outfits. Speaking of, and number 10, don't forget to check the weather. Yes, Florida's hot. Uh, it is not just sunshine all the time, though. Even though it is a sunshine state, that's a bit of a misnomer. Most days in the summer it rains, even some days, other seasons it rains. Check the weather not only before you go so you know it's a pack, but every single day so you have an idea of what's gonna happen. Generally they can give you a good hourly forecast so you can have an idea of when rain might happen. And that way you know whether you need a raincoat with you or maybe you want to plan lunch around a rainy time, whatever it might be, check the weather. Number 11, don't just eat only in the parks. Some of the best restaurants on property are in resorts. Don't feel like you only need to eat in the parks and make sure that's not your only plan. I can give you a whole slew of recommendations on resort restaurants, but make sure you take some time to look at stuff that's at the Poly or the Contemporary or Animal Kingdom Lodge or maybe even the resort that you're staying in. There are so many other options and a lot of them are really fantastic, so don't limit yourself to food in the parks only. Number 12, don't try to keep a big group together 24 seven, it's not gonna work. I'm telling you, um, it's really hard to keep that many people together. Everyone has a different idea of what they want to do. Let people do what they want to do. Let people take breaks when they want to take breaks. You might kill each other by the end of the trip if you're really regimented about having everyone do everything together all the time, every meal and every ride. Don't do it. You're gonna feel a lot better if you let people break up into their groups and do their own thing and then come together at like dinner or for a specific ride or show or something like that. Number 13, do not miss your scheduled reservation at a restaurant. If you're going to miss it, you need to call them and let them know, especially if it's the day of. If it's earlier, I think then that you can cancel on the app or online. Um, but do not miss it because they are going to charge your card if you do not show up. So it's really, really important that if you cannot make it for any reason, you give them a call or you swing by the restaurant, you just let them know. Number 14, do not buy souvenirs in the first couple of days of your trip. Why? because trust me, you're gonna see something else that you want even more. What I like to do is scope out some of the merchandise the first couple of days, keep it in my brain, take a photo maybe, whatever, of the thing that I think that I want, and then if I still want it, a few days later I will come back and I will get it. But sometimes I'll see something else I want more, sometimes I just change my mind and decide that after that moment I don't want it as much as I did before. Saves me a lot of money that way to avoid impulse purchases. So don't buy your souvenirs in the first couple of days. Buy them in the last couple and take some time to really see everything that there is before you make your shopping decisions. And lastly, don't turn your flash on and ride. Just don't do it. Don't take photos. Don't take film with a flash on with a light on. It really ruins rides for people, especially dark rides. A lot of the Disney magic has to do with the lighting in these rides. It's why you get the visual effects that you do. When you're taking a photo in Pirates of the Caribbean, you're probably ruining the experience, not only for yourself, because I'm telling you those photos are not gonna look good, 
but for the other people in the boat with you. So just don't do it. If your camera can't handle low light photos, I promise you, you can go online and find people's photos. People will believe that you are there. You can take a photo outside of the ride. Just don't turn the flash on. It is the worst and it really, really ruins the experience for everyone around you. So those are 15 things not to do at Disney World. I am sure there are so many others and there's probably people who maybe even disagree with a couple of the ones that I said. Um, so let me know in the comments below what is your Disney do not do? What are the things that you would tell people not to do when you're at Disney World? I would love to know. If you like this video, then like it. If you like me, you should subscribe because I'm making videos every single week. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and have a great rest of the day. Bye.